Now, there's different ways of setting things up. Um, you can use a flap switch, which is three position. You can use a gear switch or another you know, channel switch, which is two position. I'm gonna start off here simple and I'm gonna use a gear switch. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up for heading hold or rate mode. Then I'll show you how to set it up for heading hold and off. And then I'll show you how to set it up for rate mode and off. Okay, so right now I've got it set up so that it's in rate mode and heading hold. Okay, that's pretty simple. <clears throat> the, uh, the value that you have for the travel adjust in there is going to be how much the gain is. So right now my switch is down, which is showing negative. Okay, if I have it positive, it's over there. It's in heading hold. I know that it's in heading hold because in this particular gyro, like a lot of others, the light comes on uh, when it's in heading hold. So I'm simply going to lower this to 30%. Okay. And then I'm going to flip the switch. And then I am going to lower this to 30%. Okay. And those are my two gains that I'll try for heading hold and rate mode. The next thing I'm going to set up is heading hold and off. What I like to do is this, okay? Um, I've got heading hold there, and now for off, off is essentially a low value of gain for rate mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the gear channel, okay? And I lowered the gear channel all the way to zero, and what happened was that that light came on, okay? The light that came on once I got to about zero. That's because the center of the output for the the receiver is not always the exact center position for the gyro and there's there could be some variation from gyro to gyro and variation from manufacturer to manufacturer. So to overcome that um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch over to the sub trim okay and I'm on the gear channel so I'm going to adjust the sub trim so I'm a few points beyond it going from red to off. Okay, so I need to go a little bit negative. Okay, so the light turned off, then I'm gonna go a few clicks beyond that. Okay, so now when I turn that gyro, you can see that it doesn't move at all. But I can still move the control surface with the stick. Okay, when I flip it over to heading hold, Okay. It's moving. Okay. Flip the switch and now the stick moves it. Okay, now I'm going to show how to do how to do rate mode and off. Okay? So I've got a rate mode gain of 30%. I'll switch over to heading hold mode and what I'll do is I'll go to the travel adjust and heading hold mode and I'll make that zero, okay? So when I'm over in the heading hold mode, the light is still on, so I'm gonna switch over to the gear channel, excuse me, the sub trim, and I'm gonna look at the gear channel, and I'm gonna go negative until that light goes a few clicks off, okay? So now, I'm always gonna be in rate mode. So if my switch is in the up position right now, essentially the gyro is off. It's not making any corrections uh, to the control surface. When I flip the switch, I've got about a gain of, uh, what did I have here, 30% um, on there. So it's gonna make some corrections to the control surface. If I wanted to do a flight and I, uh, and I wanted to uh, see how much gain I needed, and I accidentally put in too much and I get into trouble and I get, get some flutter, I can go and I can switch, flip that switch off and then the gyro is no longer going to be affecting uh, uh, that control surface. Now the last method that I'm going to show here is that you can, <clears throat> if your radio has a flap switch, um, this DX7 has a flap switch, then you can actually plug into the, um, the flap channel. In the case of this DX7, um, the flap channel is the AUX1. Uh, so I've got a three position switch on my uh, my transmitter here, the flaps are over here on my helicopter version here. 
Um, so the flap switch is there. So if I can go from heading hold essentially to off and over to rate, but I've got a program that off position. You'll notice that when I'm in the middle, the light is on on there, so I need to adjust that. So I'm going to go in there and I am going to change the sub trim for the flap so that the zero position, the light's going to turn off. Okay, so I'm going to go, I want to go a few clicks just past off the light turning off. So now the um, it's not going to affect it. And if I go into heading to rate mode, it's got a gain. Go into head, heading hold mode, it's got a gain. Okay. So let me go in there and for the flaps, I'm going to change, I'm going to lower the travel adjust to about 30%. Okay. Go and flip that into rate mode. Okay, so now I've got my gyro set up so that I can be in rate mode, I can have it off, or I can be in heading hold. Um, I think the three position uh, switch is good if your airplane's, airplane does not have flaps and you're, you have that spare channel. Um, that's a good way to experiment with the gyro uh, in those three different settings. Uh, for say an aileron, I like to use the aileron um, channel with a gyro with some my small foam uh, airplanes because it handles a lot better in the wind. Um, I go out to the field uh, during lunch and it's windy, then I I can still fly. Uh, it's not as it uh, it's not like it's a perfectly calm day, but it sure handles the wind a lot better. But with that uh gyro gain hooked up to the uh aux one on the uh the receiver i've got that three position switch so i can go and i can go anywhere i want i will say that i pretty much prefer rate mode um i think it it calms down the movements in the wind without making the airplane feel a lot different um but to reiterate once you start using that gyro you're going to find that your roll rates are going to change and the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the, the adjuster tool and you're going to change the limit mechanically, or I should say electronically, so that mechanically your control surface doesn't go too far. And if your roll rates are either too soft or too hard, use the travel adjust in the transmitter to adjust it at that point. Okay. Uh, another thing is, it's, it's if you if you're flying on elevator or you're flying on uh, aileron with the gyro in rate mode, which is uh, something I recommend you do is use rate mode on ailerons and elevator. Uh, then having that switch set up so that you can go from uh, the gyro being on to the gyro being off is is really good in case you run into some kind of trouble with the gyro flutter or uh, let's say that for some reason mechanically the gyro comes loose in flight, you've got that switch to make. I will say that the roll rate in rate mode versus the gyro being off or heading hold is going to be different. There's going to be a different feel to the rate, the roll rates um, in the response. And uh, that is something that you can uh, change with the travel adjust for that channel. It's not going to affect the mechanical travel adjust, as I had mentioned before. But if you feel that in rate mode or in, uh, in the off position, that the roll rate or the pitch rate um, or the yaw rate, if you're using it on a, the, the, um, rut the tail, is different, then you, you're going to want to adjust the travel adjust in the transmitter for that. Now with this gyro controlling the servo, the travel adjust for the particular channel, in this case I've got it hooked up to the rudder, the travel adjust is actually controlled by the dial on this gyro. Okay, So if I go full deflection over on the stick, I'm adjusting the dial to get travel adjust. 
The travel adjust on the uh, on the transmitter is not really going to be the true travel adjust for the servo. So to mechanically change that, uh, I should say electronically change that, you use the dial on the uh, the gyro itself, not the travel adjust. You, it's always best to have it set up to start off with a gyro on an airplane where you're, you've been flying with 100% travel adjust. If you've got to make extreme changes in the travel on the airplane, I suggest you doing that mechanically um, first. You also want to set it up so that mechanically the airplane does not need any electronic uh, trim on it. Okay. You want to get all the electronic trim out of the airplane first before you go to install the gyro. That'll make things move smoother.